Hello guys and welcome to Classified France 44. This is a sponsored video where I'll be giving you a brief overview and first look at the game. If you like the look of the game, make sure to click the link in the description where you can buy and get early access right now with the Overlord Edition. Or wait till March 5th for the full release. Classified France 44 is a turn-based tactics game where you command a team of elite allied special operators in Nazi-occupied France in the run-up to D-Day. The ultimate goal being to help D-Day succeed. In order to do so, you need to recruit the help of local partisans and criminals who will help you destabilize the Germans in the region through assaults, sabotage and intelligence gathering. So where to begin? You start with three Jedburr operators. I will let Will introduce you. We are parachuting into France to make contact with the resistance. We're a three-man team with orders to set the country ablaze. I'll introduce you. Tom King, a strung out Britisher who likes explosives a bit too much. Vincent, our scout, a quiet Canuck. And myself, Willard Cassidy, who runs this outfit on a captain's salary of 200 bucks a month. My heart belongs to the Lord, but I am going into the shadows to fight a godless foe. As you can see, the game has some really nice storytelling, and you'll be introduced to plenty more interesting characters as you play. Capitalist Americans and British have come to fight the Germans. When we win, we will ask them to leave. If they refuse, we'll turn and fight them too. Let's get into the mechanics. The mechanics behind using these fine men are similar to other turn-based tactics games, but with some key elements to consider. You start with a set number of action points per character. You can switch between characters with tab. Using these actions, you can carry out movement, attack, or use an ability. Some abilities specifically end the turn for the character. This is most of the time abilities or attacks that directly damage the enemy such as stealth melee kills, sure. hip fire, or grenade throw. Otherwise, you are free to move as many times individually as you like, even Wait. between different characters, as long Overwatch. as you have action points remaining and don't run into enemy overwatch. This is especially useful if, for example, you want to group your men to heal and then spread them out again in the same turn, <laughs> since neither being healed or healing others will end the turn for either party. Bear in oh. mind there are also traits that can be skilled into that may even allow you to move after shooting yes. as well. The tutorial is very thorough and will get you into the action nice and quick. It introduces you to a mechanic very early on which may seem simple but is a nice addition to the genre. The ability to hold fire during an overwatch action. Great for when you want to engage the second man running through the door instead of the first. Or you could let an enemy group up first so you can get a nice multi hit with a second or third overwatch action. The second new system it will introduce to you is morale. Morale is a fantastic addition to this game and it makes it so every shot counts. This is a lifesaver for me target. as a person who will regularly a miss a 99% hit chance. When morale is below half, friend or foe, the unit is suppressed, causing them to be less accurate on their turn and have half their amount of action points to work with. A suppressed unit will also apply less morale damage to enemies. If an enemy loses all of their morale, they skip their turn entirely. You can affect the morale of multiple units at once, so using this system to your advantage will really help you succeed. A third system is reloading. Each weapon will have a number of shots it can take before it needs reloading. Reloading costs action points, so make sure the gun is ready to go before you leave cover or advance on an enemy. Remember, switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. This is also the case in Classified. Being aware of all this is especially important when flanking. Another mechanic that when combined with the morale system can be a potent combination. Pin the enemy and flank them. If they are suppressed or broken behind cover but not benefiting from it because of the angle of attack, you will do critical damage. Angle of attack also comes into play with spray zones of weapons. You can hit more than one person, and potentially allies if you aren't careful. 
Watch out for that friendly fire. Thankfully, fire. voice feedback from your comrades will remind you regularly. Fire. One of the most important oh, things to understand in Classified Super. is using cover. Low cover gives a 30% reduction to be hit, with high cover being an even greater 60%. Do not get caught out in the open, especially in later missions when your enemies become even more deadly. Also understand when your enemies are using that bonus against you. You can flush them out with grenades, or you can get your flank on. If you are unlucky enough to take damage and have a character downed, they will be out for the count for three turns. You can either revive them before the timer ends with another character, or after the three turns end they will recover automatically. If they are downed again, they will retreat from battle. Same goes if they receive more Only damage four. while downed. Your men never die in this game, instead leaving the field of battle and suffering from injuries and ailments that hamper their effectiveness in future missions until they are given time to be cured. If all your men retreat, you fail a mission. In order to complete a mission, all primary objectives must be completed. Completing side objectives will just give you extra XP and supplies. With a lot of the tactical gameplay mechanics covered, let's now have a look at the campaign map. This layer of gameplay includes a lot of important information. The map is split up into 10 segments, each associated to one of three factions noted by their equivalent pins. By completing missions in a region, you may strengthen any region owned by the faction, and in doing so will add a point towards your D-Day support. Strengthening a region three times will unlock its special ability. These can vary dramatically, giving you very different bonuses, but ultimately strengthening as many regions as possible is how you win the campaign. On this map you can also assign tasks to your men, which take time and supplies to complete, but offer different outcomes, like training which increases the experience of one of your men, or increasing relations with a particular faction. You increase relations with the different factions by completing missions in their territory, the tasks as previously mentioned, or campaign decisions, and by doing so you can unlock new gear for your men to acquire. It's definitely worth paying attention to, and is actively encouraged throughout the campaign. You can then take new equipment that you buy from factions or earn in missions and give them to your men to increase their effectiveness in combat. This is done in the loadout screen. Bear in mind your men can only equip weapons that fit their class, and clothes that represent their nation. If you are not a Yank, they will shoot you as a spy just for wearing it. There are five classes to consider amongst your own men. Leader, Support, Scout, Marksman and Heavy, each with their own skill tree. You gain skill points to spend in this tree whenever you level them up. It's definitely worth spending some time going through the skills because they have some incredibly impactful bonuses, passive or active. Your men also have unique skills worth noting, like Vincent who can never be broken, or Charles who cannot damage or affect morale of allies in his Ark of Fire. The final screen to mention is the base camp, where you so can get an overview of your comrades in arms and allow them to chat to each other, introducing a really nice level of flavour to their characters. When your characters have a conversation, it also recovers one fatigue and gives them plus one permanent max morale, so it's worth coming back to check on between missions. If you forget, the game does remind you on the campaign map under objectives. Now it's time to jump into the next mission. You select a mission on the campaign map, and then you select the people you'd like to bring along. I like to make sure that all of my men are different classes to benefit from each, bringing my scout specifically for stealth and ambush missions. There are three types of missions you'll need to consider, assault, ambush and stealth. Assault yes. you start in combat and usually deal with waves of enemies. Ambush you start in stealth but have a number of kills you can make before an ambush turn happens where you get bonuses for that turn. Finally, stealth missions can be completed without firing a shot, with as many stealth kills as you like. If you get found however, be prepared for a fight. And there you go, you should be ready to take on the game. 
Make sure to use abilities at the right time and watch out for different types of enemies. I bumped into a Fauxchamiega sniper that was scary until my sniper got him first. Overall, Classified France 44 is a really awesome game with beautifully handcrafted missions, nice storytelling and compelling game mechanics. If I've convinced you to play, you can right now if you order the Overlord Edition available on Steam. Check out the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.